we're very used to moving two-dimensionally as people mm -hmm. um, but the ability to move and spin is uh, just very dynamic it gives you a, a great sense of control Right now, it is it is for entertainment, and we're waiting for regulations to change to allow us to uh, take it and to do transportation and things like that. A lot of people are thinking we're kind of in this bit of space race, you know, who's going to be first, who's going to be the, the first city or first regions to, to do it. Twenty twenty six, twenty twenty five is that that as I said that end goal that we want to see and we can have the type certification, but a lot of people are also saying probably wouldn't see that real operational side of things maybe until the sort of the end of this decade, start of the the twenty thirties. And... Big smile, お願いします。はい、はい、ちょっとこちらもお願いします。少しずらしてください。From what I understand, um, early initial studies suggest that the Asia-Pacific region itself could account for more than half of all operated EV toll aircraft, over 40% of global revenue within the market by the middle of the century. So this is a report conducted by Rolls-Royce and Roland Berger. Uh, 82,500 AAM aircraft could be in operation in the APAC region by 2050, 2050 and that's generating an estimated $36.9 billion of service revenue. Revenue. So that in itself shows you just how big this market is. This market at the moment is already, you know, in the billions of dollars. So, and this is when we've not even seen an aircraft, you know, actually commercially type certified and fly and flying. Yes, we're having all the flight tests at the moment, which is absolutely crucial. But in terms of the middle of the century, you know, we could be looking at a multi-billion dollar uh, market. あの、それ
ドライバーが減少していくということに対して交通を維持していくとか交通の永続性をどう担保していくかみたいな形もありますしこの車両はあのあの EV でできておりますので環境に対してあのあの対応したような移動を提供するということもあると思ってますのでそういったあの広い意味でこの国内にある大きな課題を、まあ、自動運転というあの新たなソリューションで解決できるんじゃないかなというふうに考えています。